We're losing the light, people. Well, hello there, or moin, as we say here in Hamburg, and welcome to Stitch Ilonka. My name is Ilonka. Yes, it's spelled with an I, but pronounced with an E. And uh, this is a channel about my cross-stitch journey, and I invite you to come along for the ride. I also tell one or the other interesting story, and I usually provide timestamps down in the description box below, so for easier navigation. Well, from, from the title of this episode, you can already deduce that uh, I had plans and then life happened. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know how you've been the last two weeks, um, for all my new viewers, if you only just find me, uh, hi, welcome, I'm happy to have you here, um, grab something to stitch or something to drink and enjoy, and for my returning viewers, hi, how have you been so far? Uh, last time we saw each other it was a bit on a somber note. I made a video about this Ukraine solidarity stitch. Um, if you want, if you would like to check it out, please go back uh, one or two videos. Like you will see it. It's uh, um, it's got this this stitching as as a thumbnail. Um, so let's start out with the segment that I usually do at the beginnings of my videos, which is sayings from around the world. Kaylee, will you be able to make a jingle for that? I know that you did some nice jingles for um, Darcy, or do I have to reach like a thousand subscribers before you do that? I'm gonna have to have a chat. <laughs> Anyways, sayings from around the world. Last time I asked you how you would uh, describe it in your language when someone says, now this is the pot calling the kettle black. So for people who are very, who are, hypocritical i hope that's the right word and uh, the patchy pony stitcher from australia she she also has a, um, a floss tube channel please go and check her out i'll link her below uh, she's from australia she's got the most lovely little accent i love it anyway she said um those who sit in a glass house should not throw stones and that was the closest thing that i also came up with as the translation into our language or maybe uh, in Germany, we also say, you should first grab your own nose. You should first grab your own nose. So do better yourself and then you can correct others. Maybe that's, but that's not really hypocritical. I don't know. That's just really, that, that was a hard one. I know that. But um, the, the Ukrainian stitch video that I did, uh, I titled My Mustard to Current Events. And in Germany, if you have someone who's constantly giving his opinion on things that doesn't really uh, concern that person, who always tries to explain something or always wants to be involved in some kind of way, uh, we would berate them by saying, uh, well, do you have to give your mustard to any uh, to everything? So that really, someone who's really, you know, cutting in every time and giving his opinion and uh, mansplaining even whatever and then we would say do you have to give you a mustard on anything or to anything so please uh if you have a colorful picture of that in your language share this with us down below in the comments i'm very much looking forward to it now let's get to some stitching uh, my first finish i already showed in a separate video that i did a few days back about um this ukrainian solidarity stitch and i in that video i didn't have the glass uh the 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 glass frame here like the frame the, the i didn't have the glass in the frame and now i know why i didn't because it's the glare is let me just try if i can oh yeah that's better no, okay. Um, you can go back to that video and have a look. Oh, that's good. It's it's on the the reflection of the monitor there. That's good. So um, 
designed by Anthony Goldbraith. Um, I am linking the uh, blog post below if you still want to stitch it. It's really a gorgeous little piece. And I finished it with some sunflower seeds. And if you want to know the whole story about this, please feel free to go back to that video. I'm going to link it at the, uh, in the end. For the second finish, I have to invite past Elonka um, because she this it was a gift and it was already gifted and so past Elonka was clever enough to uh, film a short portion of uh, or to film a short video about it and um, I'm going to welcome her now. Hi past Elonka. Well thank you future Elonka. You look stunning by the way. Oh, thank you, I showered. Oh, you did. That's good. Um, anyway, <laughs> I wanted to show you something that I made myself and that is going to be packed up tomorrow and uh, gifted as a gift for to, to my friend whose birthday it is tomorrow. What an awkward sentence. Anyway, so um, she went on a pilgrimage last year walking from Porto, Portugal to Santiago de Compostela in Spain. And all along the, the roads pointing towards Santiago, they have these uh, blue road signs with a yellow scallop, this stylized scallop on it, so that you know where you have to go. And um, I wanted to stitch this for her as a commemorative piece. And during those three weeks that she was on the road, I wanted to be with her, you know, stitching, thinking of her. And um, I didn't really uh, finish it. No, first my boyfriend said, well, if we want to design it like this, then just let it, let, let's make it into a rainbow piece because this really, you know, one, she is part of the alphabet mafia, but two, it's really uh, lends it, the, the whole image lends itself wonderfully to have it as a rainbow piece. And um, as I charted it in Winstitch, so I, I bought Winstitch, and I, which is not Winstitch, but Maxstitch, same thing just for Mac and Windows. Um, and I charted it not really knowing what I was doing and that was what it looked like. And I saw that the blue that I uh, originally wanted to do didn't really match with the, with the fabric color that I chose and everything. And so it was really also the, um, I was just maybe too lazy to find a few more colors to make it a, a smooth transition here for those bolder colors although I made them here in the top. Anyway, this was what it was supposed to look like. And I was stitching and stitching and stitching. Back in the day, I wasn't really that uh, that fast with it. And so I ended up with uh, something that looked like this by the end of September when she came back. And um, I thought, oh, well, maybe it would have been just then it will be a, a Christmas piece. But right after she came back, she didn't have a single blister on her foot after 200 and 80 kilometers that she went um, but she had a slip disc right the next day when she came home and she had to go to the hospital and everything and I was like well I don't really know if she wants to have a commemorative piece of that on her wall <laughs> because it was you know in the end it was really uh, it ended, ended that badly but now she has already booked her flight for this year in August and she wants to go again anyway so it's her birthday tomorrow and, um, you know, that's what it looked like. And I was kind of frustrated because I miscounted somewhere and I didn't really grid the blue fabric uh, was right. And it was in September, so I was just really stitching for eight or nine weeks. And I packed it away. And then I really whipped it out last week and had a look at it. And I was like, well, I have, you know, I have learned a lot. I am much faster right now. I have the Lowry stand. Let's give it a go and see if I can finish it. And I actually did within just one day. And uh, this is what it looks like now. It's really not, um, it's not perfect. Um, I was still fiddling around with shading colors, which absolutely didn't really go that well. But anyway, um, it's kind of a funny story behind it. And I think she will like it. And um, I hope she's gonna hang it up somewhere. And for this year's pilgrimage, so for this year's uh, walk, I will probably do something similar or different, I don't know, um, to be with her in spirit, sitting here on the couch, stitching away while she is walking 
500,000. Oh yeah, and I, I cannot show you the back because I put a picture of her here and um, I wrote, uh, so for you, three weeks, 280 kilometers, 500,000 steps. For me, September to March, 2,833 stitches, 18 hours. <laughs> So um, I hope you like it and um, I will see what I can come up with for this year's pilgrimage. And now back to future Ilonka, please. Well, thank you, past Ilonka. And um, <laughs> the wonderful thing is that she immediately started crying when she unwrapped it. Is that a good thing? It doesn't sound like a good thing, but it, it actually was. Um, um, I never thought that it would actually have that impact on her, but this is just the power of the, the, well, we say pilgrimage or the translation would be the pilgrimage, but in Germany, we would just say, we are going on Jacob's way. We are going on the Jacob's way. So, um, it doesn't really have that religious connotation all the time. And she's not religious at all. She, she was just there to kind of battle some things and uh, let go of some things and stuff. And so, um, but this again showed me when she started crying immediately, this showed me how much of a, a deep, deep impact this, uh, yeah, pilgrimage has. So I don't know why, but I have been a monogamous stitcher for the last week. I mean, I finished, I finished that scallop within um, one day or two days, and then I have monogam monogamously. Why do I choose to use that word? I have only been stitching on one of my very old whips. I don't know why. Maybe it was I was feeling nostalgic. Like I was dreaming of being back in that days last August when the only thing that we had to worry about was a deadly disease. Simpler times. Anyway, um, so I've been working on, uh, let me just get rid of the scorpion here. I've been working on this wonderful piece. This is what it's actually gonna look like once it's finished. Um, it's by Alisa Collection. It was a whole kit. This one is called Lighthouse. Uh, it's got this beautiful kind of uh, watercolory feeling to it. And um, I did all of these uh, bushes here, the greenery, um, the, the whole beach, those stones, the, um, the water here. And I will be finished quite soon with it. It's just a bit more yeah, a bit more greenery and some stones here and just some water. And it's not really all full coverage over here. Uh, it feathers out like like up here um, to have this. Uh, oh, and of course, yeah, the back stitching. That's gonna be that's gonna be a tricky one maybe. And I am I also want to finish this right now because I want to see how the um, the friction pen affected this Ada that came in the kit because I used the felt tip friction pan on this to grid. It really looks very bold anyway. Um, and I really want to see if, uh, you know, if I can remove it uh, without any trace or if I will have to stitch it all again, just without the gridding. So this was really all of the stitching that I did over the last two weeks, um, but I had a bit of a hole. Um, of course, there are a lot of floss tubers who provide um, who provide lists of um, Ukrainian Etsy shops uh, and what they have been stitching on. Hashtag Stitch for Ukraine, um, beneficial uh, uh, patterns where the proceeds of these patterns go to uh, the Red Cross or UNH. CR. Um, and I also, I, I wasn't just uh, shopping at Ukrainian stores, but also on some other stores. Uh, because Picard season two happens now, I needed to have another, another Star Trek themed pattern by Happy Sloth Patterns, cross-stitch, Happy Sloth, cross-stitch patterns, happy sloth patterns.etsy.com. 
Uh, this one says fully functional, programmed in multiple techniques. And if you know, you know. Of course, I went to Fiddlesticks and bought the um, the Nightingale pattern. We sing with you, with you uh, where all the proceeds of these of this pattern will go to um, Ukrainian Red Cross, maybe, or to another organization. I have to look it up. And of course, I couldn't just leave there with just one pattern. Um, and so I also bought um, Droids Welcome. Uh, yeah, I think it was going to be a good, um, you know, like a good entrance board, whatever, you know, for our entrance here in our flat. And I don't know why, ever since uh, Teresa Koch, I was never, ever interested in Biscor News. I have seen them. I know that they're kind of pin cautions or that they are just for marveling at, just as Michelle said, at Um I was never interested in them. And then Teresa Kogut made one of her videos about her new releases for market. And I don't know what happened because this Biscor New that she has with these moths on each corner, I changed my mind. I was completely obsessed with it. I have been looking up the score news left, right and center and I want to stitch them all. But unfortunately, I don't know if I will ever be able to stitch uh, the Teresa Kogut one because um, I'm not sure if I can get the pattern here. And I don't, well, and I still have to find some sources to, uh, some sources in the US where I can get them. Anyway, this is just the score new rent. Um, and so, oh, anyway, I, I went on Etsy and had a look for Biscor News and I found a wonderful, wonderful shop. Um, and the shop is called Sunshine X Stitches. I'm gonna, uh, st no, Sun Sunshine X Stitch. I'm gonna link it below. And she has, it's a Spanish shop and she has the most beautiful Biscor News that you can imagine like with flowers, with, oh, I, I cannot even tell you, uh, and not just cross stitch, but also um, black work or line stitching, embroidery, whatever, what have you. It, 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 please have a look at this shop. It's, it's so cute. Anyway, she was doing a, um, she was selling one of her Biscor News, the Golden Lotus Biscor New, um, and all of the proceeds from this Biscor New went to the, Red, the Ukrainian Red Cross, but this was only for a limited time. This one is still available, but I don't know if she will do another, um, you know, another collection of money for the Red Cross again. But uh, nevertheless, please check her out. This shop is just awesome. And I'm so much looking forward to stitch this one. This was, maybe this was actually already one of my, um, this was already on, on my on, on my wish list. And that's why it popped up when I went online. Maybe it was like that. And a similar thing happened, uh, speaking of having having patterns on your wish list. Um, I had a lot of pa uh, Halloween patterns on my wish list by um, Oh My Stitches shop. And I ne never realized that she was also a Ukrainian. And I, I've just bought these gorgeous Halloween silhouette. No, I didn't buy all of them. I bought three, sorry, but I wanted to show you what cool Halloween designs she has. And not just for Halloween, but also um, animals silhouetted against a backdrop at, or, or in the forest or something. It's really gorgeous. You have to check out this. Oh, I'm quite sure that you already did. So I bought these three Halloween designs and next time I will not print it out on photo paper again, sorry. <laughs> so the witch, uh, the headless horseman and this bat. And I also bought from her this uh, sunflower pattern because of course sunflower Ukrainian, but none, nevertheless, sunflowers are just beautiful to look at and this one will will definitely be a beautiful, you know, reminder piece. So if you are interested in uh, stitching more from Ukrainian um, cross-stitch shops on, on Etsy, please also go to uh, 
met Morty's latest video because she has a um, this Word document linked below her video that is not also a link of all the Ukrainian, not all, most of the Ukrainian Etsy shops, but also ha is a good source if you want to uh, know about uh, know more about different organizations that you can donate to and, and, and stuff. So please check that out. Um, Crafty Gamer. No, let me just have a look. What is her name again? I Last time I said something different. Crafty Gaming Jamie um, had also a wonderful uh, collection of designers and also Jen Hicks had a blog post and showed you how you can access Etsy and find Ukrainian stitchers. Oh, one more haul thing. I almost forgot. <laughs> Um, as I said, I, I don't know if I've mentioned it, but I am obsessed with Biscornews. And I want to do I want to stitch a Biscornew for a friend of mine who is very into gardening. And I saw this one uh, by just plain Jen on Etsy, Garden Biscornew. And you see that these little water droplets out of the um, of the watering can that they are little beads. And uh, on top of the Biscornu there are dragonflies. And I'm just so, well, it, I just loved it. And um, I couldn't find the, the fabric that was recommended in the booklet here in Germany. So I, um, I messaged one of our German online shops and asked her if she has an idea of what I could use. And she said, yes, I have some scrap fabric that I am, that, that's not in my shop right now because it's not produced anymore, I guess. It's also a, is it a, yes, it's a Zweigart linen. And look at this color. Yes, it's a beautiful green with a tiny hint of yellow. I guess it's, she said it, is it 11 count? No, uh, 11 flosses? I don't know, I'm gonna write it below. Um, this is just the, per as this is perfect. And it's actually more or less the same color as uh, 369, which I guess is used for the green grass. And then you also have, I am, I can choose between these two colors for the watering can and the little ladybug and the yellow flowers. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so beautiful and I'm so much looking forward to it. This, this is, um, this is soothing me a bit and 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 helps me get over the pain that I might have to wait like two years until I be able to stitch the Teresa Kogut Biscornu. Oh, and I also won something. I won this beautiful Easter pattern from Esther, the Danish stitcher. Um, it's out of a oh sorry, it's out of a um, Danish magazine from 1979, the year that I was born, and I finally received it, and I am so happy because it is so colorful and cheery and happy, and I'm very much looking forward to stitching it. And this uh, this Easter egg reminds me of something. Um, Michal Star Parade and Mary the Danish no the Mary the Daydream Stitcher they both shouted me out this week and um they both said that watching my watching my my videos is sometimes very educational so you asked for it what is this thing about the easter eggs i just recently learned because i've probably never really thought about it and it makes sense uh, why it is that we give Easter eggs, painted Easter eggs, for Easter. Um, as you might know, the time between Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday is the time of Lent. So, and if you, yeah, so during the time of Lent, you wouldn't be uh, eating that much and especially not uh, meat or eggs or dairy so but what would you do with those eggs because the chicken 
or the chickens, they don't care if it's Lent or not. They have to get them out, you know? <laughs> so um, they would still produce eggs. And what would you do with them? So to make them last longer, they would obviously cook them. But to distinguish between the fresh eggs and the cooked eggs, they would paint the the cooked eggs in a, in a different color so that they would be able to distinguish between those two. And um, and also this, this painting uh, would obviously then be more elaborate be, uh, or over time it became more elaborate because these cooked eggs would be given to other people on Easter, you know, to celebrate the end of Lent and to celebrate the resurrection and everything. Um, so, and to make it more beautiful, more appealing, they would paint these eggs in a more beautiful color. This makes total sense. And uh, I, I just recently found that out and I thought it was very interesting. And uh, then I was also trying to find out why it is that the Easter bunny is bringing the Easter eggs. And the explanation for that, there is obviously to both of the eggs and to both the egg and the rabbit, there is a huge religious connection and symbolism and, you know, connectivity there. But I am not going into that in detail. You can research that yourself if you are uh, interested. But the bunny is obviously also a symbol of fertility because they multiply like rabbits, as you would say. And so... In springtime, during around Easter time, uh, the little bunnies are due, and so they would multiply, multiply like that, and uh, there is somehow the connection between the um, the egg and the rabbit. Plus, the rabbit is very fast, and I think it's also, you know, if you think about, you have to be very fast as a Santa to bring around all the presents, and then you would also have to be very fast to hide all the Easter eggs. So. What better animal to use as, you know, what better animal to use than the rabbit? <clears throat> so this uh, this was a short uh, educational um, interlude of why we have painted eggs, cooked painted eggs for Easter. And I also, oh, Esther was so kind to enter me into Christie's giveaway that she hosted a few days back on her Instagram because her Instagram uh, pixie, pixel, pixie, pixel, pixie, cross stitch um, has reached a thousand subscribers. And Esther entered me to this rifle or to this draw or to this uh, uh, giveaway <laughs> and I won. Thank you, Esther, again. So um, Christy asked me which of her designs I would like and I opted for the Have you hugged your therapy squid today? Because I feel right now the whole world needs a therapist. Um, Anyway, so I already, I also have all of uh, the required materials here. I've got a dark blue Ada. Why is it? Oh, okay. No, this, this looks cool. Um, I have the Ada. I have uh, the floss here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this one into some kind of a pillow and have this pillow be the size that I can slide a hot water bottle in, you know, that... During that time of month, I can have a little therapy squid on my tummy. <laughs> I think it's going to be a nice, um, nice idea. Let me do some shout outs now. I have already mentioned a few uh, um, floss tubers who have mentioned me too. I had some very lovely, no, again. Let me do some shout outs. I had some very lovely shout outs and one not so lovely shout out. Um... If you want to find out why, or if you want to know why I gave Michelle, the Giddy Stitcher, some trauma, you should go back to her latest video, um, to her February crafty update, and find out why she doesn't like me. I hope this gives you some traction. I know that you love me, but they don't. And as I mentioned before, I had two very lovely shout-outs by Michal Star Parade 
um, who finally started watching my videos and I'm very happy about that. And um, Mary, the Daydream Stitcher, also um, mentioned me in her last video and that was very kind. And I watched a, a lot of floss tube while I was stitching and um, I enjoyed Stitched by Liz's Stitched by Liz uh, video <laughs> where she quizzed her husband about certain cross stitch terms. And this was so fun and I actually tried it out on my boyfriend as well, you know, to, to ask him a few terminologies and uh, things that I held up and said, do you know what this is? And he, he did quite well, but he doesn't want to come into, in front of the camera. I tried, but he doesn't want to. <laughs> oh, and I really enjoyed Megan, the Stitching Moons video about the second set of Nora Corbett star sign designs. And um, she is into astrology and she, um, she talks about the different zodiac signs and about some of the, you know, she goes into that signs and explains them a bit more. And I, well, I clicked on it and I had it run and I was like, I am not believing in that. I mean, I don't believe in that. And it's, you know, it's just a humbug, whatever. But when she came to Libra and she said, wait, wait, let me, let me, let me read it. When she said that Libras are artists, lovers and peacemakers and that they are very tolerant to paradoxes, I thought, okay, I will actually that I can believe. <laughs> and I was actually kind of intrigued by that Nora, Nora Corbett Libra um, design. Again, I will have to find out how I can get it because I don't cannot get it here in Germany. But if I were sh shall ever stitch it, I think I will stitch uh, lover, uh, artist, lover, peacemaker underneath that. It's going to look really good. Any plans? Well, um, I want to finish the lighthouse and I want to stitch on some older whips as well. Um, I was feeling kind of nostalgic lately, maybe. I don't know if why that is. Maybe you've got an idea. Um, oh, soon I will be shopping in a German local needle shop. Um, a big one, because we don't have these a lot of these big ones uh, that you might have in the US. I'm going to be visiting them soon and I'm going to spend all my money. Well, and what else will I do? I will watch all of these wonderful videos from all of those people who come back from Nashville Needle Market and show all of their haul and what they are stitching on. And I'll try to be not, I try not to be jealous. <sighs> yeah. So these are my plans. Stitching. Not being jealous. <laughs> Okay, guys, um, I think that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, please leave me a comment and subscribe and head over to Instagram if you want to, uh, you know, connect with me there. If you ever want to send me an email, please do so at elonka at web.de. And until next time, I'm signing off with in Hamburg sagt man tschüss, das heißt auf Wiedersehen und irgendwann werde ich das auch mal lernen, wie der Text zu Ende geht. <lacht> See you soon guys, bye bye.